Hi everyone, um, training's going well. Uh, I've done my first proper weekend's training today, this morning. Um, did about an hour and a half. I am scheduled to actually do about four, but it's the most I can do in this luscious kitchen. Um, I've got Netflix, I've got the fan, I've got water, it's just just too boring anything longer than an hour and a half. Um, so that's come to a quick realisation. I may need to get back on the road sooner rather than later. I was going to leave it till the end of uh, January when it's supposedly going to warm up. But um, we'll, we'll see about that. Anyway, January sales. So, these nice people at Evan Cycles had a sale on. I said I'm going to gill it, I didn't have arm warmers, you know, decent waterproof jacket, oh god, there's so many things I still need to get for this ride. So, I shut my hand in my pocket, I pulled out some money and I bought this. So, this is an FWE um, cold harbour jacket. It's really nice fitting, you could actually get away with wearing it, I say, could possibly get away with wearing it for... Um, a normal jacket. Um, it's got um, seals uh, seams. It's 20k waterproof, whatever that means, and 20k uh, breathable. Now the biggest problem you always get when you're looking for jackets, uh, especially waterproof ones, is usually great at, at stopping in the, the rain coming in, which is really great, but as you see so many people outside, myself included, you get a waterproof jacket, you tend to sweat even more inside. So although you're gonna be dry from the rain, you're gonna be sodden with sweat. So it's important that you get a breathable one. Now, they, they work it out with, um, with, they work it out by way of, um, how much waterproofing there is, K, and how breathable it is, K. And I believe 20K is quite good. I've seen many others like Castle, as you would expect. You know, 200, 300 quid. <sighs> I ain't professional, and I haven't got money to burn out. I've just got to be very clever and look at reviews. So, please, look at reviews. Have a look at this particular one. It's Cold Harbor one, again, like I say. Um, it's good. It looks great. Granted, it's black. I didn't really want to go black because of safety, but money dictated that was the best one I could get. But I'll see what else we get as far as putting other, other things over to me to highlight me. All the bits of bought. Um, arm warmers. I'm one of these kind kind of people that I see people in arm warmers and leg warmers. They you're a bit posh, mate, aren't you? you you're not professional. Don't, don't, don't be silly. But I've come around to the idea that I do actually need it. If it ain't pouring down, and I, I've got loads of shorts, leaves, tops, then I need something to keep my arms warm. Because as I'm losing weight, I'm getting colder when I'm out from right. So I thought, Dave, you're just going to have to suck it up, big boy. And you're going to have to admit you were wrong. You need these bad boys. And these particular ones are Nanoflex. <laughs> and from what I read, we had reviews, they're the best ones between being flexible, breathable, and waterproof ish. So I've got them. So the jacket, yeah, these were about 15 quid in the sale. And the last thing I got, <laughs> was a new gillet. No. And again, lastly, what is it? I just feel like I have to buy cast it because it, look, it looks good, you know, and you see all the buys around Regent's Park and they're going with the best kit and all the rest of it. And you always see them wearing this stuff, I, I want to be as good as that, but I'm not quite as good as that. But I'll wear the kit if I can afford it. 15 quid, can I afford it? So, other bits of bought. Um, this, um, Rav Power, it's called Rav Power. See the USB ports in here. So obviously, I'm going to be taking loads of kit with me um, on this ride. Say loads of kit, loads of um, 
USB kit. Much like the stuff you can see over here. So, um, torches, headlights, um, rear ones as well, as you can see. Yeah, and all of them get charged up by USB port. Now, I could get <laughs> 10 USB sockets and 10 USB cables and plug them all in separate, but I've got coming a 10 litre um, saddle bag to put all this kit in. And if I've got all that, then the weight's going to build up and we have little or no space. So I've got this individual one. Now, it's an auto sensing one, um, so it knows when your battery's fully charged. And it can sense what type of um, pull it actually needs, amps, bolts, and all the rest of it. So I've got that, and that's six. So I can do a power bank when that arrives. Yeah. Um, all my lights, uh, and possibly even my mobile. So just one piece of kit. It is a little bit weighty. That's about a kilo. And that's quite a lot when you consider a bike's only seven or eight kilos at that. That's quite a lot of weight. So, what else have we got? Um, I've got these um, FDX gloves. Nice and bright ones. Um, I use these most, oh, I've got them mainly for signalling, especially in London. Because if you're using the normal black waterproof neoprene gloves that I've got, signalling London Especially with some drivers that aren't really alert in the mornings. Most of them, to be quite honest. And you need something to wave at them before you signal. Um, I'm one of these people. I don't go through red, red lights. I use the highway code it's meant to be used. And I shout and make my presence known to drivers who are not necessarily looking. Or, if I'm coming to G-junctions or roundabouts. Because... As a driver, I hate sitting behind a cyclist when I don't know where the hell he's going. So I usually pull up to a roundabout in the front as you do, put my hand up and signal which junction I'm coming off at. Um, I tend to find drivers go, huh? oh God, it's, it, it's somebody who knows what he's doing and tend to hold back or give a bit of respect because they know which way I'm going. So yeah, black ones are all well and good if you're training. Um, you know, I'm doing a 50 or 60K Ride these neoprene ones are fantastic. I would even say better than these proper, you know, that look really warm ones. But anyway, I use them for inside London and I will be keen to go to them. Last bit kit is obviously this. Oh my god, I've never had a pair of ultra decent uh, cycle shots before. Fantastic. Well, I'm much like many people out there, yeah. I go down to support soccer, yeah, and get the Muddy Fox kind of cycle gear. It hangs off you, it looks terrible, but it, you spend your money on putting food on the table rather than looking good or getting the right kit. Well, kids are 18, 16 now. I, I've got it, and I'm doing this for Health for Heroes and not myself, so you've got to get yourself the right kit, guys. Um, there's no point being halfway up a hill. You're sweating, and you go to stand up, and you, and your your leggings stick to the saddle because they're drooping because they're not of good quality. So you're going to do this right. My idea is get the kit. Planning and preparation prevents piss poor performance. It's not military term. Um, so yeah, it's not about you know um, spending it to look good, which you will. With some of the kit, Castle kit, if you can afford it um, on sale prices like I have, hell, why not? Go for it. Otherwise, you should be getting, you know, another brand for the same price. You deserve it. You're going to do this right end to end. Shit. Spend the money, get the right kit. Otherwise, you're going to get halfway through and you're just going to be miserable. More miserable than I am. <clears throat> Last bit kit was this neck thing. You put right, um, over your head, down your neck just to keep it all nice and warm. Obviously I shaved my beard eight weeks ago now, and I miss it. And it's bloody cold now, I've not got it. So, really good quality. It's double layered, nice and fleecy inside, I've got that. Um, so that's it, so far as new kit. 
Um, I'm still waiting for inner tubes. I'm going to take two with me. Um, I'm going to get a um, special recovery service. It's only 50 quid. So if I do get any punctures or chain snaps or anything like that, I'll just ring them up. They're there within two hours. So why overcomplicate things? Now, the other bits of kits I've talk, talked about briefly before was this, um, my saddle, not necessarily a saddle, saddle, pannier, sorry, that's going to sit on the back of the seat. 10 litre, it's a Rhino brand. I'll show you again when, your next, when it arrives on the next blog. Um, 10 litres, I'm hoping it's enough space. In addition to that, I'm going to have another um, handlebar pannier, similar brand, um, that I'm going to keep my power brick in uh, and food mainly from a ride during the day. And the last thing is, is a um, handlebar extender. What I don't want to be doing is, I'm using my uh, iPhone as a sat nav, using uh, ride with GPS. And what I don't want to be doing is looking down here, looking up and <gasps> car cruising towards me because I've drifted out. So the idea of the extenders is you come further out so I can just quickly look up and down and see where I'm going. That's the idea behind that, not because I'm being wanting all the gear and oh, as you can hear it goes on. Um, so that's that bit. Next, if you look on the website now, um, the route's been totally modified. Um, each stage is hotel to hotel. Now, here, here's the weird bit. If I book the hotels now, I'm nailed to that route, to that distance every day, no matter how I feel or what it's like. But I could end up getting 10% off the whole cost of all the hotels. Now that's going to be 12 hotels. And it's going to save me about 120 quid. Which you may not think it's a lot of money, but to me, it is a lot of money. I could actually be donating that to help my heroes instead. So I either do it now and book them, or I do a bit more work and another plan to plan all the possible hotels along the way. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to do both. Um, the first one's on there with the hotels where I'm staying. Um, you can figure out how much it costs. It would be about £14 to £85. In Scotland, they've got you by the um, um, wallet. Uh, and it's quite expensive. I can stay at youth hostels, but I don't think I'd, I'll be able to stand all the kids jumping up and down and um, talking all night. But I'll consider it. I'll put another plan on the on the website. And you can have a look and see what you think. Um, but also have all options available. Now, my other colleague who may be coming on this ride um, might not be deciding to do uh, to do the ride until quite late on in uh, in the year. If that's the case, I can't really book my stuff, so I may have to go for this other route where I have to pay for him. But if I have to pay for him, I might have to be more selective about where I'm going to stay because prices will, will rise, obviously. The closer it gets to the date, the hotel prices will go up. So I'll need to keep that completely in mind. Um, so have a look on the website. Um, you'll see my training regime. You'll cry when you see it. It makes me cry. It made me cry this morning on that brick for a saddle. Um, I've updated the route, completely redone it. I've updated um, the hotels. You can see all the hotels now. I've not updated all the kit this, but I'll put that on once the, um, the other bits and pieces arrive so you can see it all in one. And I'll do a complete um, shakedown, uh, what's going to fit where and all the rest of it. Because I'm going to have to do some dry runs. I saw a film today with this guy who's going from New York all the way down to the end of Argentina. And he says, oh, I'm not going to use a map. I'm just going to get some stuff, shove it on the bike. You know, he had a miserable time. He did no planning and no preparation. And that just goes to show, show if you want to enjoy these things, you've got to do the planning and preparation. I thought initially I was going to plan a bit of the route, get on it and just do it and, you know, um, and tough it out. Nah. Go do the training. Go do the planning. 
got to do even more planning, got to do the route planning, got to do the shakedown of all the kit on proper rides. So if you look on the training um, regime, you'll see there are periods where I've got two, where I've got a weekend where I'm doing two seven hour days. That is so I can get on the bike, possibly stay overnight, ride out with all the kit that I've got, shake it all down, see what works, what doesn't work, what's rattling about, is the GPS working properly, can we understand it, do we understand it, do we understand my own limits, have I put too many hours in the day, have I put too many miles for me to do, um, yeah a lot of soul searching going on here, um, as you go through this you really solidifies why you want to do it, the dates that you want to do it, how much you can actually afford because yeah, get on a bike, once you did a few miles and come back home, of course you're next to bugger all. But when you start to think about this, you think, yeah, I want to do it, yeah. And you go, okay, I need a proper rain jacket, I need a gibbet, I need an warmers, I need pro proper leg things as well. Oh, and proper shoes. The ones they use normally are nice and skinny underneath, you can't walk on them. So I'm going to have to get them as well, I'm going to get mounted bike ones so I can wear them instead of putting extra shoes in the thing. So the cost just... Pieces. So you really got to be happy with what you're doing in your own mind and why you're doing it. It's still number one on the bucket list because uh, as the things get thrown up and say no, it's not going to work, it's going to cost too much or you're not fit enough or is it the right period, can you get a holiday for it, is your bike fit for it? It's gone, I don't care, I'm doing it. You've got to be focused. Be focused and fit and plan for this, it's gonna go well. Oh. Anyway, guys, thanks very much for um, being here with me, listening to me witter on, um, and I'll uh, speak to you again soon.